This time on Sightseeing Spot Facts, we're taking a look at Mount Rushmore. In the U.S. state of South Dakota, in an area called the Black Hills, sits a colossal national memorial, a sculpture carved into the hard granite rock depicting four American presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. The idea to carve a colossal sculpture here came from Don Robinson, the state historian. He was inspired by a similar project called the Shrine to the Confederacy and hoped a similar monument would boost tourism in his state as well. Robinson just needed to find a sculptor and his first choice was Lerardo Taft. But Taft was in poor health and couldn't do it. He then turned to Gutsum Borglum, who was already planning the Shrine to the Confederacy. Borglum agreed, and the two of them started working together. Robinson originally wanted to put the likeness of heroes like Lewis and Clark, Buffalo Bill, and Native American Lakota chiefs Red Cloud and Crazy Horse onto the mountain. But Borglum convinced him that putting the faces of presidents on the mountain would have a wider appeal. Borglum knew that a monument to presidents would be more likely to attract funding than a monument to local heroes, and he saw this as his opportunity to create his life's masterpiece and achieve national fame. He decided to focus on presidents who represented different aspects of American history. Borglum chose George Washington because he represented the birth of the United States. He was the first president of the country and he led the American Revolution which won its independence from Great Britain. Jefferson, third president of the country, was picked because he was the main author of the Declaration of Independence. He also doubled the size of the country with the Louisiana Purchase. 26th President Theodore Roosevelt was chosen because he represented development in the US. Leading America's economic growth in the early 20th century, overseeing the construction of the Panama Canal and breaking up corporate monopolies to protect workers' rights. And Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the country, was chosen because he represented the preservation of the United States. He kept the country together during the Civil War and played a key role in ending slavery, two of the most important events in American history. Work began in 1927 and 400 people were hired to work on the project, mostly sculptors, miners and even rock climbers. Dangling in small seats attached to steel cables 9.5 millimeters thick, they worked in all weather conditions. They used a variety of tools and techniques to remove around 400,000 tons of rock from the mountain. 90% of the carving was done using dynamite, a dangerous and risky method. Another method used was honeycombing, which is drilling many holes close to each other. This made it easy to remove the rock in between the holes, and from there, jackhammers and chisels could be used to carve the finer details. Each of the faces measures about 18 meters high, with noses 6 meters long, and mouths and eyes 5 and 3 meters wide. George Washington's head was the first to be carved. It was completed in seven years and dedicated in 1934. On the far left-hand side, Thomas Jefferson's head was carved next, but halfway through the carving, the rock was found to be of lower quality and was dynamited off. They restarted his head on the right side, and it was finished in 1936. Next was Lincoln in 1937, and two years later, Roosevelt's head was dedicated in 1939. It had taken 14 years of hard work to complete, and the amazing thing is, there wasn't one death during that time. But the truth is, it wasn't really complete, 
at least not in the way Borglum had envisioned. He originally wanted the sculpture to include the president's torsos, not just their heads. Also, plans for a large inscription alongside the figures were scrapped, as the text couldn't be made readable from a distance, and the president's reshuffling at the start had left no room for it. And so, another idea was thought up. In the rear wall of the canyon behind the figures, they would create the Hall of Records. This was to be a 24 by 30 meter room carved into the mountain to hold historical documents, including the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Work started on it in 1938, and by 1941 they had dug 21 meters into the mountain. When Borglum passed away. His son, Lincoln Borglum, took over, but funding for the project dried up, as the United States was preparing for World War II. Half a century later, in 1998, a titanium vault was installed in the floor of the hall, just inside the entrance. It contained 16 porcelain enamel panels displaying the U.S. Constitution and other historical documents, as well as the people who worked on it. Despite Mount Rushmore's popularity attracting millions of visitors each year, it has always been a controversial monument. And this is because the land on which the monument was carved belonged to the Native American Sioux Nation. The U.S. government even agreed it was theirs in the Treaty of 1868, long before the monument was built. But when gold was found on the land a few years later, they broke the treaty. The US government has continued to offer their descendants more and more money over the years. And while the amount keeps getting bigger, their descendants continue to decline their offer, asking only for their land to be returned. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.